This is Top Fake, the place where we debunk disinformation and set the record straight on fakes about Ukraine. I'm Marco Supran, and this week we dissect the following. The UN calls Ukraine the most dangerous country in the world. Moldova renounces Transnistria for NATO. And the Strategic Cultural Foundation unmasked. Not too cultural, but very strategic. So let's get to it. This week, several pro-Kremlin sites published stories claiming that the United Nations called Ukraine the most dangerous country in the world. These claims are based on the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs tweet from February 5, stating that eastern Ukraine is one of the most mind-contaminated areas in the world. But the tweet does not contain any claims about Ukraine being the most dangerous country in the world. Russian Defense Ministry television channel Zvezda completely distorted the UN tweet, claiming that Ukraine was included in the list of the most mined and dangerous countries in the world because of the events in the Donbass. Zvezda conveniently does not mention the fact that Russia invaded and occupied the Donbass territories, placing the blame for the war in eastern Ukraine entirely on Kiev. Quote, Kiev launched a special operation against the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics in 2014, Zvezda writes, and refuses to cease hostilities in violation of the Minsk Agreement. The UN tweet reads as follows. East Ukraine is one of the most mine-contaminated areas in the world, with the highest number of anti-vehicle mine incidents globally for three consecutive years. Now, the UN's annual landmine monitor report presents an overview of the landmine situation in the world. According to the report, in 2017, armed conflict in Afghanistan and Syria contributed to more than 4,000 casualties. Thousands of casualties more were accounted for in Ukraine, Iraq, Pakistan, Nigeria, Libya, Yemen, and Myanmar collectively. According to the report, Afghanistan is the country with the highest recorded mine casualties, 2,300 in 2017, followed by Syria with 1,906 deaths from mines. Ukraine recorded 429 mine casualties in 2017. All of those casualties occurred in Russian-occupied eastern Ukraine. Moldova will hand over Transnistria to Russia in return for NATO membership, announced several pro-Kremlin media earlier this month. RIA Novosti, Izvestia, Lenta.ru and others claim Moldova will abandon Transnistria if it becomes a stumbling block in its growing cooperation with NATO. And it is none other than the European Union which is forcing Moldova to abandon Transnistria because if it turns out that countries with unresolved territorial problems cannot join the EU, Moldova will surely abandon Transnistria, claims the publication Vesti. Russian media cite an interview that Moldovan parliamentary speaker Andrian Kandu gave to the Ukrainian internet newspaper Yevropeska Pravda, in which Kandu spoke about Russia, the reintegration of Transnistria, and Moldova's plans to join the European Union. Kandu explained that granting Transnistria autonomy as a step towards reintegrating the region into Moldova had finally moved the issue forward. Giving up on Transnistria in order to join the European Union is an outright lie, Kandu said. He did, however, speak about what Moldova can offer Russia to abandon control over Transnistria. Quote, if Russia received guarantees that Moldova will not join NATO and will not unite with Romania, guarantees that the Russian population of the Transnistria will not be deprived of their minority rights, we can come to an agreement. Then we can agree on an international and not a Russian peacekeeping mission in Transnistria and how to get rid of the huge cache of weapons there, Kandu said. To reintegrate Transnistria into Moldova, Kishinev is ready to guarantee Russia that they will not join NATO or unite with Romania. Russia, however, cannot force Moldova to abandon its pro-European course, can do emphasized. And finally, how a Russian pro-Kremlin site's English language page very slickly hides its Russian roots. The Strategic Cultural Foundation has all the features of a modern state-of-the-art think tank, an all-English site with a wide choice of articles on current affairs focusing on world politics and security issues. The site's mission statement declares, SCF works to broaden and diversify expert discussion by focusing on hidden aspects of international politics and unconventional thinking. Benefiting from the expanding power of the internet, we work to spread reliable information critical thought and progressive ideas. Only one detail is forgotten. Nowhere on the page can you learn that the site is registered and managed in Russia. This is only disclosed by site data, also known as a WHOIS search. Why are the managers of the site trying to hide the fact that the site is Russian? Well, one reason might be that it gives Russian pro-Kremlin media the possibility to quote international media. We can note references to the site occasionally on pro-Kremlin media outlets, like here on the RIA site. 
The site gives no information on owners, editors, or visiting addresses. There isn't even an email address for the contacting of the site, only a form for requests. The site loyally relays Russian narratives, such as the Skripal case is a NATO false flag operation. The MH17 is an American false flag operation. Everything is an American false flag operation. Ukraine is run by Nazis. Estonia is run by Nazis. The European Union was created by, you guessed it, Nazis. Luckily, Russians have excellent weapons. Elaborate conspiracy theories on the deep state, Soros, or the Jews feature regularly. Mass protests are always staged by the U.S., by Soros, or obviously by the deep state. The progressive idea of the Strategic Cultural Foundation is that authoritarianism is good. Powerful populist potentates like Kim Jong-un, Putin, Maduro, Xi can always rely on the support of the Strategic Cultural Foundation. And here is their Russian original. Check it out. Same logo, same stories. Gotcha. That's it for this week. You can find much more dissected disinformation on the Stop Fake website. Look, be vigilant, look out for fakes, and if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.